This is lesson 7, 6, which is factoring ax squared plus bx plus c. Our essential question is, how is factoring a quadratic trinomial when a does not equal 1 similar to factoring a trinomial when a does equal 1? Okay, so the first one is sometimes we don't have to make it super complicated if um, we have a greatest common factor. So it says, what is the factored form of 3x cubed plus 15x squared minus 18x? So if we factor all of these terms, so 3x cubed would be 3, and we have 3x's, then 15 is 5 times 3 and 2x's, and then 18 would be um, 2 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3, and we have an x. So what do all of these have in common? They have a 3 and an x in common. So that means that our GCF is 3x, and then we write what's left over, so that would be x squared plus 5x minus 2 times 3, so minus 6. So now what we did by factoring out that GCF is now we have a trinomial in, left inside the parentheses that we can factor just like we did in the last lesson. So we can say, what are my factors of negative 6? Okay, could be 1 and negative 6, or negative 1 and 6, and then 2 and negative 3, or negative 2 and 3. So if I want them to add to positive 5, I'm going to use that those factors right there. So this would be 3x times x minus 1 times x plus 6. So that is my factored form of that expression. So sometimes, if you notice, like I would look at the numbers 3, 15, and 18, and we know that 3 goes into all three of those numbers. So that's kind of a, a signal to you that you should probably factor out a GCF first. Okay, so now I am going to show you two different methods for factoring when the, the A value, so the leading coefficient, is not 1. So in the previous lesson, we were only looking at just where the, it started with x squared. So our leading coefficient was a 1. But now we're going to talk about what to do when it's bigger than 1. So I'm going to show you, like I said, two different methods, and you can figure out which method works best for you. I don't care which one you want to use, as long as you pick one of them and are able to use it to solve problems. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is I am going to multiply the outer two numbers. So 4 times 6 is 24. So I'm going to multiply those, and I need to, just like we did with leading coefficient of 1, I need to find two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to my middle number, which is 11. So I'm going to find factors of 24. So 24 could be 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, or 4 and 6. So of those pairings, the 3 times 8 is going to give me 11. So now my next step is I'm going to write this, and instead of 11x, I'm going to break it up into 3x and 8x. So I'm going to say 6x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 4. Okay, that's my next step. So then I am going to use parentheses and group the first two terms and the last two terms. Okay, then my next step is I am going to factor out a GCF from both parentheses. So in the first parentheses, I know 6 and 3, 3 goes into both of those, and they both have an x. So I'm going to take out a 3x, which is going to leave me with 2x if I take out 3x from 6x squared, and then if I take the whole 3x out, I still have to leave something in its place. So I'm going to leave a 1 right there. Okay, then from the second parentheses, what number goes into both 8 and 4? Four? 4 does. So I'm going to put a 4 on the outside, and 8x divided by 4 would be 2x. 
And again, if I divide 4 by 4, I'm left with a 1. So your goal here is to make what's inside the parentheses the same, same expression. So because it is, we can tell we did it right. And then my final step is to group the terms. So I'm going to group the 3x, that comes from right here, and the plus 4 into the first parentheses. And then the expression that is the same in both parentheses goes in the second one. So this would become 3x plus 4 times 2x plus 1. And just like with a leading coefficient of 1, I could foil this back out or multiply with a table to make sure that it equals my original expression of 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. Okay, so again, this is called factoring by grouping. So if this method makes sense, it is definitely one you can use. Okay, so we're going to look at another method for, um, for factoring a trinomial with a lead coefficient that is greater than 1. So if you remember back to when we were multiplying binomials or even trinomials, we used a table. So with this method, I'm going to show you how we can work backwards with a table. So just like our other method, the first step is to multiply the outer two numbers. So actually, I'm going to start, start setting up my table first. So here's my table. Okay, but just so the opposite way, um, if we were multiplying, we'd put them on the outside and then find the inner boxes. We're going to do the opposite. So we're going to put... 3x squared right there, and we're going to put negative 8 right there, and that's coming from there and there. Now I need to find the 2x terms, and that I'm going to do the same way we did the previous problem. So I'm going to take 3 times negative 8, and I get negative 24. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 24, but add to negative 2. So I'm going to list out my factors of 24. So that would be 1 and 24, we could have negative 1 and 24, or we could have 1 and negative 24. Negative 2 and 12, or 2 and negative 12. Negative 3 and 8, or 3 and negative 8. Negative 4 and 6, or 4 and negative 6. Okay, so I'm looking from all of those pairs, which one's going to add up to a negative 2? So that looks like it would be this one right here. 4 and negative 6. So I'm going to put 4x right here and negative 6x right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at each row and column and we're going to pull out the GCF. So we're going to write down what is the biggest term that goes into both of the terms I'm looking at. So if we start with this one right here. So if I look at 3x squared and negative 6x, okay, I know they both have an x, so I can take out an x, and then 3 goes into both of them. So I'm actually going to take out a 3x, okay? Now I'm going to look at this column, 4x and negative 8. So I think, okay, 4 goes into both 4 and 8, and only one of them has an x, so I can't take out the x. Okay, now I'm going to look at this row. They both have an x term, so I know I need to take out an x. And 3 and 4, there's not a number other than 1 that goes into both of those. Okay, and then the last row here, I'm going to look right here. Negative 6 and 6x and negative 8. They're both negative, so I'm going to take out a negative. And then they don't both have an x, so I can't take that out. And I think, okay, what's the biggest number that goes into both 6 and 8? Well, that would have to be 2. So then I'm just going to write down my factors. So from the top here, I have 3x plus 4. And from the side, I have x minus 2. So either way works to find the factors of a trinomial that has a leading coefficient that is greater than 1. So it's up to you to decide which method you would like to use to factor. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.